Hey Brick Maniacs, welcome back. Once again, it is time for the Brick Mania Vault to open tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Central Time. Uh, make sure to check those emails because we are going to be sending the links out for all these awesome products. This is a heck of a vault hall. It is. It's a little bit bigger than last time. We've got a couple repeats, mm -hmm. which also means it's the last time it will appear. Right, right? exactly. Because we three have displays. Three display copies. We keep one at GHQ for the yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. just so we have reference copy. And then the other stores, they send theirs back, and here we are. So, I mean, we have this, this spans sort of the history of mm -hmm. the stuff that we've done the last three years. Not only like the history of Brickmania, but actually the history of what we cover. So, right. World War I, all the way up to modern day stuff. So, well, yeah, and kind of, kind of cool that we're kicking off World War One month, bringing an end to, to Red October here. So we have a couple of awesome World War One kits, but let's start with the ones that have already seen their day in the vault once before uh, and are now on their, their their last trip there. So the big one, I think, is the Blitz box in the center here uh, because that was already an incredibly exclusive battle pack that came out late last year, kind of a Christmas time thing, uh, early World War Two. This one we got back from our Chicago location. Believe it or not, they didn't... Uh, they didn't sticker it up. So if you're the, uh, the proud owner of this Blitz box, not only are you going to get it uh, all put together, but you'll be able to apply your own stickers as well. So it'll be like you got it right out of the package. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> nothing, nothing wrong with that. But this is the second time that that has been in there. So this will be the final run for There's the Blitz no box. More, no more Blitz boxes. These, these are all exclusive models. Mm -hmm. None of these things that are in the Blitz box have been available in this form. Right. Um, Figures too. Right. So and we don't have any plans ones. of bringing them back, um, anything like this. Uh, it's just there's just too many too many too many subjects to do not enough time in the day so if they do come back it'll be years in the future yeah so very very cool the other one that we've had in here before that actually got one more batch before uh, before getting into the vault uh, because it won a fan poll is this awesome leopard quite an intimidating MBT but it has already been in the vault once as well so this will be the last chance to get your your hands on that yeah. which what a turret on that thing I love <laughs> I love I love this the turret the length of the tank it's yeah, just, yeah. It's epic. We'll, we'll just keep adding and adding yeah very, very cool. <laughs> and I love the action shot for this you'll see it's a uh, it's jumping yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a tank <laughs> flying out the thing that's really really that's cool. a great power to weight ratio. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then finally, the, the Gaz 67, uh, designed by Sam Krakauer, who was a, a guest designer for us last summer. A uh, really popular little Russian uh, Jeep. Yep. We just, uh, that dark green, those those pieces are hard yeah. to find. Absolutely. And so we were kind of like, well, we, we'll do as many as we can. And once the supply kind of dried up, now we're now we're moving on to bigger and better things. So the right. Gaz is in there for the second limited, time. Limited final. production ability because of dark green. It's exactly. So, to get. so that and that, that the BT7, there's a BT5 mm -hmm. that we just can't, there's no way we can make one of those pieces are just too rare. So I do happen to know if you want to look around, you can find that BT7 design at least available some places. Yeah. Though. <laughs> that, that one was very popular, yeah, <laughs> made the rounds for sure. But those three kits are the, are the ones that have already arrived in the vault once before. Uh, and so those are the ones that you're really going to want to get your hands on if that's something that is on your list. Um, moving on from there, one of the new arrivals in the vault here is the M60. Uh, which is another cool camouflaged uh, Cold War tank, the, the precursor to the the precursor to the patent. The it is. It is. Well, actually, it is the culmination. Of the patent. It right. was never okay. officially called a patent because that was like, you know, the first patent was the M46, mm -hmm. then the M47, M48, and then this is all on the same family tree, but it was never officially called a patent. Unofficially, it's known as a patent. Well, I'll refer to it as the movie tank because if you ever watch any awesome uh, uh, movies from around this time, this is a very popular tank to be to be seen in Hollywood. Yeah, and, it, and it's guarding the gate of exactly. every every U.S. military. <laughs> when the when the big monster rolls into town, yeah. these are the tanks. That you're so see, he was replaced by the Abrams. There's lots of these made. They were all mm -hmm. over Europe. They were used by you know, the United States and, and of course Germany, and then around the world, this is Korea, places anywhere that there's potential action with the front line. You know, Soviet main battle tanks, so you'll see the M60s there. Yeah. Uh, Israel, uh, they used, uh, they were used heavily used in the Gulf War. Mm -hmm. uh, the last time the Americans actually used the Gulf War. Um, but this is, uh, this is NATO camouflage. This is, this is like, if you were, if you were, you might be driving your, your, your Volkswagen down the German countryside and come around the corner, this thing be staring right at you. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over Europe. Well, it just so happens to be driven by the happiest looking tanker in the world. <laughs> so he gets that. I just crushed a Yugo. <laughs> he's a, he's a pretty, pretty thrilled to be driving around his M60. Um, another one we got here is the Yag Panther. Yep. Awesome little, uh, and the, Andrew Summers creation, one of the, one of the, the sort of Andrew Summers signature. This is one of the more famous. I don't know, famous, but the more popular Andrew Summers design. Yeah. Period, it was it was multiple reissues. Just did one mm -hmm. recently, and then we're we're cutting it off. Yep. Um, some of the parts in there are, are pretty rare, and we have to ration what we're going to make of these more rare uh, vehicles, rare yes. parts. So, so the Yag, the Yag Panther is 
now officially out for production? Yes, it is. It is in the vault. I'm also one of those kits that if you are a fan of the classic Lego Yellow um, and like to collect your kits in, outside of the Flesh Tones, this is one of the final kits that has that uh, uh, as the tanker. So yep, yep. you won't see that much going forward. So if that's important to you, take advantage. <laughs> um, speaking of World War One and Great War Month, the Hawk Missile one. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, this is the Garford Pulovs. This came out in March of last year. Um, designed by Cody, a very interesting looking vehicle to begin with, but then also was kind of part of the birth of the Brickmania 3D printing process. Early, when it comes early, to those early, yeah, early, early wheels. Um, we 3D printed them ourselves. They, we have mixed reviews on them. I think, mm -hmm. I think there's still people that think we want to build official Lego. Well, how are you going to make that wheel? It's, just, right. it's no Lego equivalent. So uh, we 3D printed them. It's, it's a unique design. The unique design is not. Cody's fault. It's, that's the way the bottom Right, was. exactly. It's just a funky looking car. Yeah. Right, they, they put a turret on the back of the, of the truck. Mm -hmm. uh, and in, in World War II, they didn't have like the, the pneumatic tires. It was real heavy, big solid rubber tires. Right. I mean, the ride, the, 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 the jarring of your spine must have been terrible. You know, <laughs> these bumpy country roads. But if you're diving into Great War Month and uh, want one of the models that uh, it will not be available during that month, it is definitely a way to kick off kind of right. the exclusivity like, of it all. One of the more rare Brickmania models. Mm -hmm. We only made a few car armored cars, and, and the, the Garford Poodle was actually one of the fewest reduced yep. of the Brickmania kits. So, um, you know, anything that's under 100 is just going to be ultra rare. Yeah, right, exactly. This is definitely a super exclusive model and something that, uh, that fits very, very well in the vault. Um, actually, so this is uh, sitting next to us here, the Hawk Missile Launcher. Man, 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 I'm not yeah. even sure what you say about it. Mid-23. Mid-23. Yeah. But, uh, man, what, what an awesome look. I mean, just the rockets alone are, are pretty epic, but then you get that little stand. Um, this is something that I think, especially given the increase in mocks that we've seen, given our modern kit lineup, I, would be a really cool piece to have featured in the box. This would be a Vietnam era mm -hmm. creation, but it would it, it's definitely still something that you would see um, I mean in late in the in the desert storm. I think they still use it all around the world now. But sure. It's, it, the missile itself is much updated, but mm -hmm. the appearance is exactly the same. Uh, newer radars, newer newer everything that goes with this this is this would if you're doing a Vietnam uh, war mock, you want to do an air base and have these guys stationed outside the, the air base just to you know, when the mates are going to show up, mm -hmm. you know, the answer. Very, very cool. Yeah, I, I love the look of that. Just a, some sort of sleek white missile, the way they all come together. <laughs> it's almost like it could be a little desk display piece. I don't know. Yeah, yeah that's Maybe I'm just crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, going back to World War One, let's jump. I know we're kind of hopping all over the place here, but we've already shown off a little sneak peek of Mary's new Mark V, um, and that means that the Mark IV is retired, uh, along with the, the stray away from add-on packs that you know that we've been doing. Uh, so this is a Yitzi model, correct? Or it is a combination yeah, between you and Yitzi? It's a Yitzi adaptation of my Mark V, but mm -hmm. the we went through, I mean, Mark IV and Mark V are significant, right? It's the vehicle shape. So, uh, yeah, Yitzi did a, a once, did, did a once over. Did, did, you know, I, it was it was kind of in a transition period when, when Yitzi was leaving us. So mm -hmm. he left it about 80% done, and I had to it. Sure, it's going to rest. Okay. Um, yeah, and it was, it was, it was, I mean, it was mostly not short. Mm -hmm. It was that far along. Or it wasn't there, it was really far along. I didn't think it was. We did make a mail add-on pack, which we do not have. The right. previous one we auctioned actually was set up as the mail add-on pack. Mm -hmm. This one is just as is. This is the Black Best uh, Mark IV female, which yes. just refers to the type of gun because that's what they talked about back then. So the Their words, not ours. Yeah, yeah right, it exactly. I don't, yeah. It's incredibly sexist, but that's just the way it works. Mm -hmm. Well, and if, if Black Best having that name is uh, is important to you, you know, this is this is your chance to pick that up. Once again, the the new Mark V is on the way. So if you want that side by side, uh, and you missed out on this initial run, here's your chance to, to go ahead and claim that. And we should refer, make sure that you understand this is the original Black Best, not the video game Black Best. Sure. In the video game, they actually made a black Mark V. Mm -hmm. In reality, it was a, it was a gray Mark IV. Right. Historical Black Best, not the video game. Right, right. Doc, it's well documented because it was actually captured by the Germans. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, it, but it was Black Best before the Germans. Okay, I did, I did not know that, but still available in the vault uh, and epically awesome. And then our last two models here. Dan, yeah, let's talk a little bit about that T64. Uh, first of all, the, the super secret tank. Um, just because I think this was one that, that definitely flew under the radar for the MBT collectors, uh, but now since it's been not since it's been out of production for a while, people have been like, "Hey, is that ever going to come back?" Right. right. The answer is no. <laughs> yeah. So this is the last we did that main battle tank series. Mm -hmm. It was like it was a good. It was more than a year of it, continuous at once a month in the main. Right. Battle tank. This was the final culmination. It was a T sixty four, the Russian Cold War. This was like the the Cadillac tank. Um, they didn't make very many of them because it was so expensive, so complicated. 
and only the best units. So these were like facing off directly against the best the British and the Americans, the French had, like say outside of Berlin. Sure. Um, so these would be the tanks that would be fighting the best of the, the allies. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, allies, the West, the yeah, sure. best of the West. Uh, you know, as opposed to T fifty five, which were produced by the tens of thousands, these were these were rather limited. Mm -hmm. uh, this was what ended up becoming the T eighty or some you know, real high end tank. So, um, so uh, this kind of started the premium Russian tank, right? Right. This was their answer to the best that the West had. They just didn't have the the economy to to, to make mass this stand, yeah, the standard for all the things the Russian. Just as the T eighty was never the, the, the mass produced standard of the, mm -hmm. of the, the more you know, the later on Soviets. Well, still a totally epic uh, model. I love that the side the armor. Fish, the fish skill. Yeah, they, yeah. they actually only really did that for the first initial run. Mm -hmm. And then they put regular side skirts on it. I think these things got caught on the thing. Sure. And you're driving down a narrow street in Berlin. Yeah, or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> still cool. Uh, awesome Not, knocking the antennas off all the Travis and, and Yugos. That <laughs> <laughs> but uh, definitely an interesting piece of uh, not only Brickmania history, but the. Uh, the Russian tank history as well. Uh, and then finally, we have the uh, the old Messerschmitt, but not the old Messerschmitt, the later war Messerschmitt. This is the one uh, that's been is, around for a while. This 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 was the like the two year old last year's model, mm -hmm. two years ago. So this is this was uh, Cody's first Messerschmitt, uh -oh. and it's printed on both sides. It's pretty unique. It's it's pretty cool. We it was it was very for us to be able to print on those side pieces was was an experiment. Yeah, uh, a new new technique. Uh, there's still some stickers on the wings. It's all applied up it's just as it is. This is no longer available. Now we have the Battle of Britain edition mm -hmm. uh, uh, measurement, which is slightly different coloration. Did we tell you about this? That's the last one we're going right. to get to. Yes, <laughs> and then finally to cap everything off, uh, obviously Great War Week. So we have Bruno here, uh, which I believe this is Bruno's first time in the vault, so there might be another one out there, but no guarantees. I know we have only one at the GHQ. Um, so this is, I mean, a more iconic piece from World War One than Bruno, um, a big gun. This is the famous one. So they, there were a lot of a lot of uh, guns like this. They were basically naval guns taken off of retired or or out of date battleships. Mm -hmm. But this is no exception. So this is a, this is a battleship gun, uh, pre World War One battleship gun put onto a rail carriage, used to the idea was bombard the enemies from long distance. Right. Uh, railroad gun being the ideal. ideal uh, ideal way to do it. It's the gun's too big to, to haul over land unless you're putting it on tracks. So they would take these to locations. Sometimes they would build these these fancy concrete pit and they'd actually take the tracks out from under it. They could spin the whole gun around. Mm -hmm. Otherwise you have to go to a bend in the track. Yeah, and try to turn this thing around. Yeah. My goodness. Or bend just to get to aim for the right the right, the right location. <laughs> and they would actually make side sidings that had a curve on so they could mm -hmm. use it to aim the gun. Um, the train that hauled this is this is the, the Bruno that was in a video that Right. This is the, the it's in Canberra, uh, Australia right now. Mm -hmm. You can go see the gun barrel. The, the truck didn't survive past the, the, the 20th <laughs> century. century. Yeah. yeah. Well, they, they brought it to Australia. They had it on display for, forever. And I guess it just kind of rusted away. Sure. They, they scrapped it. But they kept the gun. The gun's still there. Uh, we used it in our video. Uh, the uh, Capture the Indians gun? Amiens. Amiens. Okay. Yeah. Um, so that was in the video. We we colorize it for the video because yeah. after after, the, after this kit came out, we're like, well, we're starting to find color representations of like, mm -hmm. oh, it was not gray. Yeah. <laughs> so so in the video we have it right, but this this is gray. This is probably what it would be as it was built, mm -hmm. and they would paint them locally a different camouflage. Um, in the book, yes, that's what I was just going to go right, to next. Right, right. We got the loading car, and I believe it's Great War Great War Volume One. No, it's two. It is two. It's, okay, it's, 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 fair it's, enough. It's, um, yeah, yeah, the loading car. It's the locomotive that hauled this thing, and the uh, yeah the ammunition car. So this this is a crane right here. Mm -hmm. actually, there's, there's a tro there's a trolley in there. Um, this would actually reach into the ammo car, grab, be able to pick up a shell, and then when they that, that ammo car was empty, they they wheel up another one. Yeah, it's sure. like basically a box car with a hole in the roof. They can load the shells. In there. Um, a big operation, you know, a gun this big, you know, on a ship, you have a, you know a, a giant ship, right? But with lacking the ship, you still need to get the shells to it, you get everything. So they'd actually bring it all in by railroad. It was quite a convoy. Yeah. yeah. And this particular train, uh, this particular gun, it was one of, I think, a half dozen, or about a dozen that were on the ship. They, were, they scrapped the ship, it was mm -hmm. out of date, couldn't keep up with the rest of the the, uh, the German fleet, the high seas fleet. So scrapped the ship, took the gun, repurposed it, and you know, they, they were uh, all over the, the, the Western Front. This one just happened to be captured by the Australians. 
captured it intact and drove it away. <laughs> so. That is absolutely yeah, right. So like, how do you how do you actually like in the middle of combat hook up a train? And Especially this size, yeah, yeah, right? Like kind of, that's not covert at all. They, they had to like repair <laughs> the tracks going through no man's land, <laughs> get get it, get it back to the uh, the Allied lines. Yeah, a heck of an undertaking to say the least, and a heck of a model uh, which will you know definitely be a, a rebuild on your guys's end uh, when you pick it up. So very <laughs> yeah, I just had to rebuild this and mm -hmm. came all the way from Chicago, and, and uh, it, it didn't take me that long. Uh, it depends how well it's packed and how nice your UPS <laughs> or your or your mail carrier. Well, no matter how it arrives, remember you do always get the instructions. Um, we do include all the fun little uh, stuff that we have on our actual displays in our stores, and then finally, of course, Dan will go around uh, and you make sure that the uh, certificate of authenticity with his signature on it is included, so you guys know that you're not getting a a, a recreated knockoff with maybe some you know less than ideal stickers, yeah, etc. So but you're actually doing something that supports Brickmania. We, you know, you're supporting us directly, and also. You Say hey, this is this is the real deal. This was a this was a shop displayed model. Um, you know you don't get the box, but you do get the certificates. It does let people know that this is a real deal. You can yes. you know if you if you end up wanting to resell this someday, um, you know because that's a good you point. Might, you might have to. Uh, life changes. It has. It's, mm -hmm. it's, it's not always. Yeah, this will help. <laughs> it'll, it'll show the next the next owner that this is an authentic Brickmania model. Um, and it's you know it's 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 worth paying to get the real deal. Mm -hmm. Yep, I totally agree. A very very awesome lineup. Remember that drops at eight a.m. Central Time tomorrow. So make sure to set those alarms. You can wait for the email or just jump on rickmany.com, hit that refresh page, and wait for them to start showing up in the vault. Good luck to everyone. Dan, thanks for going over these awesome kits with me. You're welcome. We'll wait till next month.